So, I got to tell you a little bit about this picture before we get going because it'll kind of help. This is an artist's drawing. These people we're going to do tonight are Kristen Christensen and Bodell Christensen. And it was before they had pictures, so there wasn't a picture. But the kids and the grandkids that knew Grandma and Grandpa, they hired this artist and they said, so and so has grandpa's eyes so and so has grandma's eyes you know and they said can you draw a picture and when they were done the artist got done because they said ah that's grandma and grandpa right there so from family memory artist perfections this is how they came up with who we're doing tonight so a little bit of an investigation <laughs> Kristen Christensen and in 1860 when I was about 50 years old I was living in Denmark um, with my wife Odell we had five children alive at the time two had recently passed away and we had a beautiful farm we 400 acres um, part of it was uh, beautiful moors it was just a generations of family around us we just had a little paradise it was nice beautiful and at that time, um, we had uh, kind of an excitement in the area on the way of religion. Uh, Mormons were coming around, and we had heard a lot about the Mormons, and a lot wasn't very good. No, in fact, some of those that had decided to join and came over to the states in America, got here and apostatized, sent letters back saying it's a fraud, it's a fake. And they heard, we heard about the, the Meadow Massacre, and we were pretty apprehensive, but the boys came running in the house one day and said, the Mormon missionaries are coming, the Mormon missionaries are coming. And I said, well, sit the dogs on them. <laughs> Christian. I said, well, let's hear them out, see what they have to say before we condemn them right off. So uh, we invited them in, and we heard what they had to say, and uh, took the Book of Mormon from them. We met with them in meetings. And I knew long. it was true right away and joined and was baptized in 1860. And by 1861, about a year later, I had to do a little more thorough investigating. And, uh, but I joined too. Me and all five kids and Bodell, we all joined the church. So in 1861, in the spring, the family was baptized and we sold our farm. We moved to a temporary home. And in 1862, one year later in the spring, we came out to Zion to be with the saints. So we came with four parties, so there was four ship loads, and uh, we all immigrated together. We landed in, uh, what's it called again? Garden? Garden City. Garden New City, Jersey. New Jersey. And uh, from there, we took steamers all down the rivers. We went on uh, locomotive for a while to different ways till we got to Florence, Nebraska, and from there we were outfitted and ready to go on an overland trek with the rest of the saints we were with, and we came to came to Salt Lake, and uh, right away, the, as soon as we got to Salt Lake, the, the immigration party just totally disbanded, and it's a little unclear, got to take the time out, it's a little unclear if they were assigned to go where they went, or if they just went, or if they had family there or something, I, I don't know. So, but they went to Spanish Fort first. We went to Spanish Fort, the first place we lived in Zion. Uh, it was a little hard. We didn't stay there very long. Our daughter Annie, she went to the school and people made fun of her accent. And the farming was a lot different in Spanish Fork in here in America than it was back in Denmark. Well, we were irrigating, which I didn't know about irrigating. We were building ditches, and, you know, but we built our new, a new home there. But then, like she said, we were not there very long. So we, we moved to, Moroni and uh, started over there building a house, started farming again, and uh, we weren't there very long. We went to, from there we were called to, by Brigham Young to go to, um, he called it the South Bend of the Sevier, which is today Monroe, and uh, at the time was the Black Hawk Wars, and it was quite relentless. Uh, Indians were, it was terrible. The raids, we had night guards, day guards, round the clock, um, 
for a couple of years that we were in that area. There in Marysville. And Marysville. Well. But we lost our son while we were there. He um, died from illness, not from the wars, but there were many that were lost from the war. So Brigham Young finally said, this area is not safe and you need to leave. And we were okay to do that. So we left and we went to Gunnison. And there we built another house and started over again. And, uh, it wasn't too long and Brigham Young said, okay, it's, it's doing all right now, and you can go back. But we decided not to. And so we had the choice, and so we went to Scipio. And uh, we were not in Scipio for very long. And uh, our two sons, and they took their sister, our daughter, they wanted to go to a little 4th of July celebration in this new little settlement that we've been going for a couple of years called Oak Meadows, Oak City. Here. and uh, they had such a great experience they came home and said we got to go back this is where we need to be this is where we got to go this is it and they prevailed on us so we, we moved to Oak City and started again but this uh, was the place this is where we needed to be two of our kids married um, other kids from here in Oak City um, one was a Kristen Lovell, and the other one, uh, she, Kristen Lovell, and, and, Annie, and, Mary and Annie married Christian Anderson. They were half brother and sister. Half brother and sister. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. of all the places, you know, they came to America and got here in 1863, and they came to Oak City in 1870. So, in seven years, they had moved seven different times. And each time, with either an assignment, a different move. It was, it was unsettled. It was scary. It was harsh lands. It was trying to start over and make it go. But when they got to Oak City, they said they finally found that peace and settled here. And actually, east of the, the chapel now, um, it's, uh, the Jens Anderson's home is there now. That's where they stayed. And they were here about 10 years before Kristen passed away. And, and then Boletta lived about eight years longer. But I think that when they were in Denmark, they, they lost two daughters that were quite young and I think that when she finally heard the truth of the gospel it would have been okay to leave those little graves and come to Zion and join the church because that was the truth and the truth was she wanted those daughters for eternity and they came to America they came to Zion and they were sealed in the endowment home in 1869 so they had their family then for eternity and I think that that's one of the things that helped her to leave all that was the blessings that they got when they got here. There's not very much that is um, history of, about these folks, but what we do have is that the kind of the trick that we told you about how many times they moved, how faithful they were, and they just kept going to where they were supposed to next and next and next. And it's just a really quite a legacy that is amazing to see how faithful they were in their, in their testimony and then following where they needed to go. It's pretty neat story. Any questions? Who are some of their ancestors now? <laughs> um, Descendants. John and Vicki Christensen? Descendants. Do you know John and Vicki Christensen that live here in Oak City now? Or uh, Blaine. Clark Blaine? Oh yeah, Blaine. Is Blaine. their grandkid? Yeah, Clark. Yeah. Fern. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's their grandpa, great grandma. That's, uh, uh, I'm not going to pretend that I know or what. <laughs> Up there a little ways. Yeah. Wow. So, and the one daughter, not the daughter, Christian, who married Christina. Is that who it was? Yeah. They had 13 kids. Mm -hmm. And all of their, I mean, there's a lot of Oak City people right there. They have over 1,200 descendants in 1957 from these two. And that's almost been another 100 years, so there's a lot of descendants. 